Hey everybody, it's Jason here. Um, doing a show. It's been a while. Um, doing a show today that kind of ties a lot of my uh, work with sacred geometry, um, a lot of the stuff I've learned about biofeedback, the heart, um, frequency, emotion, your DNA, um, and basically how it all ties together, like like a computer program, if you will, and talk a little bit about junk DNA and how it's not really junk DNA. We go over um, wavelength and frequency and things like that. And then I, I also tie in some things that I've noticed from this studies that has to do with CERN and a couple other things. So um, we'll get right into it. I'm trying to get you some visuals up and uh, we'll just go from there. So what we'll be starting with is talking about how um, your emotion has the ability to shape and program and basically braid and twist your DNA. Remember how I told you guys everything in nature is a tornado. Um, it's a thing called phase conjugation. We'll get through that here in a moment. Um, basically a reciprocating wavelength that comes to a center point, um, almost like a gravitation point. It actually um, creates gravity in itself when it goes through this stage. And that's how, when you're looking at a magnetic field, you're the aura around your body that starts from your heart, how it feeds back into itself, that, that suction point, how that happens. It's actually because it's actually creating a small amount of gravity, um, pulls the electricity in, uh, a lot to do with magnetism. Um, sacred geometry, frequency, all that. So we have a lot to tie in from a lot of the other previous things, but I wanted to take this a step further than I, than I was before and really get some a good place to take notes and uh, maybe help you with your understanding of what's going on and your perception of this reality that we exist in. So nature has put everything into this profound shape. It, 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 ties in a lot with the double helix and sacred geometries. And when you get understanding that, when you understand why it's in the shape it is, then you can understand that genetic manipulation, things like that, um, snipping, removing, adding pieces here and there, they're not getting the big picture. So it's almost like a computer programmer or say somebody, you're learning a language, right? They, they've identified the letters. They, they know how, you know, A, B, G, T, whatever. They understand what's going on and the proteins that make up the DNA, but they, they don't understand what they mean. They're looking. It's if you're trying to decipher a language, if you will. If you're reading into that language you, and you understood the letters, you, you could put them together, maybe understand the words, but they, they don't really understand the words. And let alone the words of sentence. So they can barely even fathom the idea that there's paragraphs and chapters. And when they take snipping and adding these pieces, it has to do with wavelength and frequency where it all ties together because the point of conjugation where all these waves line up, like when they do EKGs and things like that of your heart and they measure it during intense emotions like bliss and joy, happiness, things like that how they see that they become harmonious and at that point where they intersect that that has to do a lot with um the x chromosome in your body that's why you know sex is determined by that and everything so there's a lot to jump into and there's a really good underlying moral to this story and hopefully you guys get that but um i'm going to tie in a lot of my work that i've studied from uh just just a lot of the great minds around the world. And I'll give you some references as well as we're going along. So, so if they get changing and switching around things, it, it would change the ability for your emotions to program DNA, basically. And, and the point of that is if you feel enough emotion, it, it, your DNA, it can basically magnetize, if you will, um, your DNA. And when that becomes magnetized, it, it allows it to harmonize with other things. Basically you have 
all these different wavelengths and frequencies going through your body. And there's a moment where they synchronize. And at the moment they synchronize, that is where this magnetic X or crossing or conjugation comes. Um, where the tornado would meet at the point, its apex, I guess you could say, and then start coming out the same way on the other side. So we'll start with um, the X chromosome, the, the thing that determines if you're male or female, has a magnetic field around it. So this, this field basically is determined by the microtubules in the DNA, the little spirals in the, in the X chromosome at the, at the moment of um, sp cell splitting, um, mitosis, or meiosis. So the cell division, the time that the cell division happens is basically dependent on whether or not the chromosome is magnetic or not. So to put this in, a, in an easy, understand way, so when the, when the cell splitting occurs, the, the X chromosome being orderly and magnetic would mean it's, it's a normal cell. It's, it's not gonna be cancerous, but if it's disorderly and it's not magnetized correctly, then it, it becomes basically cancerous. So if the magnetic field's messed up, then the timing of the cell division is going to be messed up, and then the cell's going to be messed up so, because it's cell division and creating it. So basically it's a kind of a dance with these microtubules in your DNA aligning correctly in the center of that X chromosome. And that is basically the, the mouth of phase conjugation, if you will, the, where the, the meeting point is. And I'll, I'll pull up an image in a moment so you guys can more visualize what I'm saying here. So to better understand that, we need to better understand where the magnetic field around our DNA comes from. So when they first started to model DNA as a double helix, they took x-ray photographs, basically. So for them to photograph the x-ray shadow of the DNA to account for the picture they got, which was an X, it had to be a double helix. So to put it basically, when they first discovered the DNA was a double helix. They took an X-ray photo and realized that it was an X. So no pun intended there, just kind of the magic of how things happen. So the braiding of this DNA basically is emotion induced, if you will. And to understand this, the braiding sense of what I'm trying to say is it's like taking a, a piece of string, and braiding it and getting, or, you know, a piece of twine or yarn, whatever you want to say, a thicker, Cord, and then braiding that and having a rope and then braiding the rope again and just having a, a knotted rope if you will it's the idea that it's, it's almost like computer programming um, you have all this information compacted down and simplified into a, another form where if you were to just zoom in on all this codex if you will or the syntax however you want to put it you'd understand that it's just so much information to take in, but they're, they're only looking at the letters. They're not looking at the words, the paragraph, the sentence, or the book that it's writing, if you will. They're looking more at just the letters. So they're not, they're not understanding the language of our DNA. And that's why they would even go ahead and manipulate these things because they would understand how dangerous it, it could become, basically. My, and my point of this is, is that is the way that your body, your DNA becomes almost like your body becomes a radio that picks up on your consciousness. Um, if you consider that uh, the stories of people that die and come back to life or their heart stops, they die, they're clinically dead and they bring them back to life. They get their heart beating again, you know, brain function, everything. And then they still have their memories. They still have all this stuff. It's because consciousness doesn't fade away. It's all frequency and, and vibration. Part of um, what I'd call the unity consciousness, it picks up on that. And then you have the individual consciousness of the person, um, the reality that you perceive things as. The ensoulment of DNA, if you will. So we're trying to think of the mechanical functions of our body all the way down to our DNA to understand the whys and the hows of the spiritual side of why we have souls, why we have memories, why we have emotions, you know. Um, all the suffering is basically caused 
by the separation of our consciousness or disconnect from that unity consciousness. And if you understand the facts that we're all connected, it's all, it's like a radio. If you tune a radio to a certain frequency, you get a certain channel. That's your certain perception of reality. If you tune it to a different frequency, you'll get a different channel, a different perception of reality. It doesn't mean all the other channels don't exist. It just means your radio is tuned into a specific frequency. And it, it does use the same measurement. So 106.1 hertz, whatever you want to look at it as, whatever radio station you have. It doesn't mean all the other stations don't exist. It just means you're tuned into a specific one. Okay? And the point of like all these biologists, you know, hacking, cutting up your DNA would change the the moment where this magnetic X crosses this, this point where everything becomes harmonious. Okay. And to change the spacing of these codons basically would change everything, change the ability for us to harmonize with nature or anything else. Basically it would be almost unnatural and, it's not right. Um, it'd be like cutting words out of your book, you know. Um, if you're if you're trying to decipher a book and there's only a couple letters missing out of it, you could use what well, you could say context, you know, and figure out those words. It's like the um, puzzles they put in the newspaper. You figure out one letter, you figure out the next, and through process of elimination, you can figure it out. You have enough context to understand the paragraph, the sentence, what it was trying to say. But if they don't understand that, the bigger picture that these are packets of information on a larger scale, and they all stack together to completely make everything line back up, almost like the caduceus where they have the, the weaving together, those points are what makes it harmonious. That is when many wavelengths become one wavelength, they become um, conjugate, coherent. Like, um, like the, the difference between a laser and a light bulb is coherence, you know, you, you take a wide thing and you make it a point, right? It's the same amount, uh, you could take a, a, a laser, you know, like say, um, I don't know, 60 watt, 60 watt laser, we'll just say, you know, like, a 60 watt bulb it's it's kind of right but i mean a 60 watt laser would like cut a hole in your ass it would just done right but it's that coherence it's the same amount of energy it's just whether it's coherent or not lining up or not um coming together harmoniously to form a point right and when it comes to that point there it actually creates gravity and that that's something in itself is a lot to think about um you can look more into like piezoelectric things and biofeedback. A lot of these um, things people have been working on for years to understand this. But if you take just a purely scientific means to look at it, you can start to understand the spiritual aspects. And then it makes it not so uh, woo-woo or crazy, if you will. Um, people start to have a, a logical understanding of the illogical, if you will, the things that you can't necessarily understand but you feel so to get a little more detailed when you have your dna you have um, a nest of ma these magnetic fields right they get bigger and they come out and that goes by the phi ratio okay everything in nature goes by this phi ratio it's it's the way things are it's it's from the way plants grow put leaves and branches on to everything you know you could just go on and on about it you know um, one, two, three, five, eight. It's the idea of adding the number before it to get the next number in the, in the equation. Um, and it allows things to become coherent, maintain a center of balance and gravity and get the most um, exposure, I guess, to the energies, if you will. That way, uh, if a plant has a leaf on it, it doesn't put a leaf right on top of the other leaf because the other leaf wouldn't get exposure to light and just there you go. It's the same idea. So in these toroidal fields in your DNA, these donuts, if they, if they nest properly, they can actually make a, a magnetic X, if you will. Which then, if it's done correctly, 
can actually project harmonics out of uh, the throat, I guess you could say, of the, t the donut, the toroidal field, the tip of the donut where it starts to the suction point, right? It can actually project harmonics out of that. And this can kind of pertains to the way that DNA gets a field effect that actually moves faster than light, um, through the speed of light, if you will. So here's a picture of the magnetic field effects uh, surrounding your heart, coming out of your body. Um, they go out by the, the phi ratio. This is what I meant by nesting. Um, other fields, around other fields, around other fields. And this is the, the throat part I meant, uh, the hole, the suction point, right? So if you were to look at DNA uh, on like a sacred geometry level, it has a dodecahedron shape. If you were to look down it as if it was a slinky looking down the double helix. So if we were to rotate this photo and you'd look down, you'd see a 10 sided figure. Um, trying to think of the best way to put this. So this, this wavelength right here, from here to there, is in the ultraviolet spectrum. It's actually, you see these two whiter strands. That's uh, part of the double helix of DNA, if you will, the, the, the actual shape we get. But this is um, actually like a light, blue light, if you will, going up and down. And um, like I said, it's in the UV spectrum. Um, some people could call it, call it blue fire, things like that. But uh, just wanted to give you something to look at here with the sacred geometry aspect of it. And we'll get more into it um, in a moment. So that double helix, basically, you're seeing is a short wave in your DNA. What the, the biologists don't understand, basically, um, they forgot or don't understand is that that is just one aspect, one little part of the a braid of, in your DNA. They're only understanding the letters. They're not understanding the paragraph, the words, the, the syntax, if you will. They're, they're only understanding just the alphabet of it, okay? They're not understanding how these form words and sentences and things like that, that, that make up your body and who you are, your well-being, um, everything to do with you. I mean, it even has to do with aging. Um, so anytime they, they chop this little piece of that out and put it over here, then it becomes non, it doesn't become harmonic where it's supposed to. All the other wavelengths might meet up there, but this one doesn't because it's like, it's like having a, a computer program, all this information. Your computer or the programmer, if you will, knows how to pick out what information to read when it needs to, to understand different things. So in different states of emotion, your frequencies would match up and become coherent at a point where they cross. And that cross point would have all the other frequencies in your body, you know, matching up with it, making it harmonic. And then it would know what DNA, what codes to read, right? So in, um, that, that's how you get your, your magnetic field to stay strong, things like that. So it, it shows the importance of you know, living a happy, blissful life, um, just doing what's right, taking care of yourself, being harmonious with nature as well. And it really worries me when you start seeing all these GMOs and things like that, what they're doing to the plant long term, what they're doing to the, the consumers of the plants. Um, and animals and other things it, it just it could make uh the genetic pool dead if you will um, almost have like the inability to naturally produce functioning species that you know do what they were intended to do to understand the things they're able to understand we're becoming a lot dependent on technology and things like that and our arrogance, we, we think we understand the alphabet, so we understand the words and the sentence in the book. Just because you know your ABCs doesn't mean you can you know, understand a, a scientific paper or you know sit there and read the encyclopedia and understand it, right? So I'm trying to just find a, an example of something like 
it shows you how the wavelengths aren't harmonious. They don't um, sync up like they should at certain points. So like where that these, uh, through the wavelength, um, it would almost look like the low point would be the high, the high point would be the low. And then when they cross, they would meet at a certain point where all three of them or four of them, all these different wavelengths meet and become harmonious. And that happens through your DNA. And it, all, it has to do with the braiding of your DNA, essentially. Um, you have short waves, long waves, and all in between, you know. So um, it's a lot to understand. But <clears throat> once you just start to just, just get the basics of uh, harmonics and frequency, understanding how frequency and vibration not just saying the words and thinking you get it, but under, understanding it is, it's a way to, yeah, it, everything is energy, right? So you, you have to have a medium to have that energy go through it. So it'd be like saying my voice is emitting a sound. It's not really emitting a sound. It's vibrating my vocal cords, which perturb the air which creates sound, right? My, uh, you're hearing the, the product of the vibration of the medium, which is air. Now, if you went in the water, you could do the same thing. That's why there's no sound in space. In a vacuum, there's no sound because there's no medium, right? And that's why, in my theory, that when people say photons, they're kind of misunderstanding what it is because it's not really a packet of anything traveling right because you could take the light bulb turn it on it's coming through the glass right it goes through the window it goes through the glass of the bulb nothing's really traveling so it can't be a particle because a particle can't just go through glass it can't go through things right it's understanding that it's like an instantaneous reaction at a distance, meaning that there's something being perturbed. Now, the way that the light works is the light is being turned on, the energy is going through it, and it's manifesting the unmanifested energy. So ether, the ether around us, that is what the light travels through, it, it, the medium, just like sound waves or air or water, things like that. This is the medium for light, it, it, it's the ether, it's unmanifested energy all around us. Or another way to put it is you could take, you could hold that light bulb underwater, no, nothing can get through or in or out, right? You could hold your flashlight underwater or whatever. So there's nothing being emitted. My mouth isn't emitting sound. It's vibrating a medium and giving you the product, right? So when, you're, when your DNA is working properly, you have harmonic points where they cross, where they become coherent, right? These different wavelengths, one's going up, one's going down, but they meet at a certain point. That's harmonics. Now your heart does this. You have a different biofeedback in your heart and all these different signals, right? Through an EKG, different, different points. And you have um, different places where they become harmonic, right? And then there's always a place where all of them become harmonic. So in these sh uh, short waves, when you get slightly bigger rays, and then they go by bigger waves, it uh, all has to do with uh, the phi ratio. You know, you add this one to that one, you get the distance between that one. You add this one to that one, you get the distance between that. But this whole large wave is where they become coherent, right? Now, if you were to take a picture of the X chromosome and lay it there, over top of this, this is where that magnetic X would come in. You'd have the X going there, and then the where the, the legs of the X meet, this point right here. That's where it comes out, and that's at the point of cell meiosis or mitosis. It has to be magnified, harmonious, right? And if it does, then it becomes an orderly cell, and it does what it's supposed to. Now, if you have this all messed up, this harmonic, then it doesn't do what it's supposed to. And you can see, as I said, you just look at this at a larger scale. There's always a point where uh, the phase conjugation, the coherence, where it all comes together, right? And you can figure this out with math and the phi ratio. It, 
is very simple when you just start to understand, but you just add the one before it to get the next point. And you can do this with anything. You can make your whole life balanced and harmonious if you would um, by, by, you know, just even when it comes to architecture, sacred geometry, all these things, you start to see like a flower of life symbol and a fire ratio and how it all comes together. And when you can start to build buildings or everything, I mean, a crystal even, right, has a, a pentagram structure. It, it's, it's like the outside building blocks of the DNA where you have the inside being the decahedron and then you have these um, almost pentagram looking connections on the outside that go all the way around it like a flower it, it just shows you how it all comes together and connects it's definitely uh computer language if you will for something this grand architecture this grand design this the will of the force if you will um some people may call it god I don't like using that word as much, but because when you, when you consider God, you get a lot of religious annotations and things like that. The idea to understand all these different interpretations of what God is, is to understand that there really is no you. There, There is a you. There is the person, the, the individual, but there also is the collective, the unity consciousness, this grand design. You're, you, you think of your cells in your body. Think of everybody, every organism, every molecule, every atom, everywhere being connected in this great, huge web tied together. Some people fail to see the, the strings that connect the web together, but it's there. And, and all these things are based on laws, laws of nature things that you cannot change, right? And they all come together in this grand design. And when things are harmonious, they work right, and they live healthy, they get it. And there's probably, to, to our knowing, there's only you know a few carbon or silicon-based things in the universe that could even understand the meaning of life and the complexities of these things. And that might be an arrogant statement to say, but it's from our knowledge, right? So you, you think of that all, that collective, that that is God. All right, so if you just go back to the, the Big Bang, right? They say that there was all the superpowers you have, like strong and weak um, nuclear powers, magnetism, and uh, you know electromagnetism, all these things. There. All the gravity, everything is tied together, and then one super dense, small, but immensely powerful energy ball at some point. That's what they say, and it, and it outwardly expanded, something happened and it expanded outward and separated into different points. So to understand really what's going on, to, to look at things from a specifically just, just scientific point of view, you think you can consider, all right, I'm real, you know you're real, Everything, uh, if you can physically touch it, you know it's real. There's things that we can't touch that we know are real. We just, we know they're there, energy being one. And when you consider all this stuff, you have to understand that everything's frequency and vibration. So if everything is frequency and vibration, there has to be a source of that frequency and vibration. There has to be a radio tower emitting these frequencies that make up cells, the earth, your body, your thoughts, uh, light, sound, everything. There has to be a source. You don't throw a rock in the middle of the, the pond and not get ripples. The ripples don't come from nothing. There has to be a source from these vibrations, right? That source, that, that unity, that the all, if you will, coming together or being apart that separation of consciousness is what gives us the suffering we have. It, it makes us not be able to comprehend with our, you know, our mortal means that what, what God really is, the, the source of this, that, that is God. You know, we're all a part of God. 
if, you, if you're looking at the just a strictly scientific sense um science seems to be searching for god if you will and people take these religious texts a lot of the times and try to personify it as a man or a bearded sky daddy looking over them or whatever but in reality it's incomprehensible in our human state we we cannot fathom the depth of what god is what our source is the divine source of everything and there is a source there is a will right there is a will that's why you have things like karma or every action has an equal but opposite reaction you throw the ball at the ground it bounces you throw it harder it bounces higher there's ways to rise above these laws in a sense that you don't really beat them but you work with them it's like rowing down the stream right you go with the flow instead of against it um you can sit there and go against the current as much as you want but if you just go with the current you'll get moving faster in the direction you're supposed to be going in the, in the direction it's intended so once you just start to understand all these things it all comes down to harmonics frequency vibration and our dna does this this is the essential part of our dna and the structure of dna to start understanding that you could have just take your your bodily functions your heart beats as a wave and it rakes as a wave it it pumps out pumps in and we're going to get into some pretty cool stuff about the muscle muscle layers and things like that um this is going to be maybe a two or three part video but i promise you i'm going to do them in order consecutively so everybody that's interested can get as much information and resources out of it they can but and on even a longer wave your breath comes in into play so you have your heartbeat your breath all that it, it all it's biofeedback but it all comes together in just different forms of wavelength and frequency right the point of this is that you can have short wavelengths constructively come together on long wavelengths which is called nesting or embedding which in nature is what what plants do like i said the the phi ratio the fibonacci sequence and this fibonacci sequence makes everything harmonious and makes it balanced right through balance spiritual health returns right everything needs the balance if not destruction i've said it a minute many times too much dark things just are chaos and are destroyed too much light it becomes stagnant there's no competition and we become victims to apathy uh, we need the balance we need healthy competition but you also need to understand the long-term goal right the idea is to live a harmonious life with your surroundings right to be a part not to destroy to to leave behind just what just things how they came or a little bit better right um the same aspect comes comes into play with your body that it does with you know nature and the food chain we could let deer and cattle overgraze the land and we could just eat roots and stuff like that but the, then we're at the top of the food chain so it, it all becomes out of balance below us the cattle would overgraze the land and then they would die of starvation as the plants are dying off anyways because they're over eight and as the overpopulation happens you'd have death famine disease all the plant eaters would die because the plants are gone and the death and the famine would just wreak havoc over the whole entire food chain so i mean you could let the cows and deer and all these things that we we eat just overpopulate and destroy the earth but that's what they do i mean think about a chicken it lays an egg every day like we're humans it takes what 280 days 266 days to have a, a baby an elephant even longer like um these are complex things um but it's all about balance and harmonic harmonics it's obviously represented as the greek letter phi but uh 
once you start understanding that you start to understand more of sacred geometry and the purpose behind it and why you see so much of it in the occult and things like that the point of this is uh things like when your heart beats um the fire issue is involved right the, the space between heartbeats and when it's the time is divisible by the fire ratio you'd understand that that is a moment of open emotion something that actually you feel it's it's a raw emotion and it and it, it becomes harmonic right at those moments the blissful moments the possibly even um angry moments things like that passionate moments your heart is beating in concordance with the phi ratio so it's all part of this magical web of invisible lines that some of us choose not to see but it has directly to do with your breathing and your heartbeat so that's why practicing things like um, your breathing techniques you know um, in through the nose out through the mouth long drawn out breaths focusing asking yourself to separate the matter the the physical matter in your body from the energy in your body can you can you tell me when you just close your eyes take a couple deep breaths and can you differentiate energy from matter that at that point you start to become enlightened with things because you can start to control not stifle but control your emotions control your body control this vessel this vehicle that we are given that our soul drives to get to its purpose right it's understanding our process <laughs> to get to the next level right the 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 understanding of that process is the purpose of each step of life right and it's like learning to use a new tool a paintbrush power tool a bike whatever it is the more you use it, the more you become comfortable with it the more you can use it to your advantage have more fun with it and do more things your body is this tool so it kind of comes into the idea of the kundalini which they say is um lays at the base of your spine like a coiled snake until uh it goes up through your chakras when your chakras are properly aligned everything's balanced and then that energy goes up through your body like the caduceus and you can um open your third eye your pineal gland now a lot of this have been going through this process especially since 2012 because of the the alignment to the cosmic center the the all soul in the center of our galaxy right where all this energy and everything that is the core of our galaxy exists so we were at right angles right to have more exposure to this energy and basically what they meant by end times and things like that with the 2012 there they meant like where humanity and everything picking up on this consciousness was going to be at a low point there's going to be a lot of war chaos um and just disharmony but as we come around the cycle the great year uh for the next 13,000 years we're just going to be increasing in that harmony in that knowledge so there's going to be a point where we're awakened any all of us and we'll start to understand things understand things um it's like remembering the future if you will it's uh it's a lot to take in there's many people that have written many books that their books depict things that happen later in their life or as as them as the antagonist or the protagonist and things like that but they they always had recurring themes right um one one uh author i can think of his name i think it's philip k dick something like that he had written 
many, many stories that had the same idea. There was always this dark haired woman that would show up at the door and tell him his reality is an illusion. And once he realized um, he was doing this, it started like to mess with him a little bit. But um, there's this recurring theme. And once he realized that he, he was talking to a pastor one time and he said, have you ever read this book, blah, 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 the Bible, the book of Acts, I think. And he said, uh, no, I haven't. But he said, well, it's the same, same story as the character in this story. And also in your other story, in your other story. And, it, and, and he took it and he read it again. And he read the, the Bible excerpt, the chapter that the preacher was talking about. And realized this was a retelling of the same story. There's just um, slightly different names and sometimes the same names. Uh, one of them being Jason. Jason only used one time in the Bible in that chapter out of the whole Bible. And, um, and then he started to realize uh, other, other things. He was an uh, Orwellian type writer writing about different realities, if you will. Um, and you start to understand that these, this is all like a, a program, like a, it's almost like a computer program. And the only time you really start having that deja vu feeling is when something was actually changed, when a reality forks off. Meaning we can exist on many different dimensionals or realities at once. And so say we have a dream or a daydreaming, we can tap into this um, consciousness, this unity consciousness and access this other part of these other realities where things are terribly different than they are in here just from one one simple change and uh that's what i mean by like remembering the future it's it's almost we're tapping into this unity consciousness there's time exists all at once like past present future it's it's all going at the same time people perceive time differently that's why when uh you start talking about things like tachyons all the trolls will come out and be like oh it was a misread and a device or a tool that they used to da, 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 da. and then they try to explain it all away but in reality it couldn't be further from the truth that how tachyons travel backwards through what we perceive as time could have an effect on our foresight of the future or current events because of these particles coming in so i don't know think about uh the movie watchman right when they had a huge detonation of they thought there's a huge detonation of um nuclear energy releasing all these tachyons preventing uh dr manhattan from having the ability to have his future side because of all the bombardment of these particles that travel backwards through what we perceive as time into our thing it's it's the idea that einstein was looking for what how can black holes change the fabric of space and time but we we know we now have the ability to understand that because we understand that things create gravity and we start to understand more what gravity is it's magnetism um certain kind of magnetism but it is nonetheless magnetism and how that essentially ties and is the shape of space-time fabric, right? Like um, taking a piece of paper or a napkin, and you sit a ball on it, it curves. There's a dip in the napkin where your ball was sitting, right? If you're holding it up. Or you have your shirt, right? And you, you push down on it, and there's a curve in that because you're adding mass, matter, right? So there's ways to counteract mass and matter too. So what, what would people would call anti-gravity would just be really be more of anti-magnetism. It the Higgs boson field, right? I've explained it this way a couple of times. You have a field covered in snow. You're walking in the snow, your feet are dragging, you gotta pick them up, right? But if you have skis, you can ski across the top of that. So everything that has matter or mass to it, all these matters that we perceive, 
and our perception of reality, I guess you could say, as matter doesn't doesn't mean there isn't matter that doesn't have mass to it. But the 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 matter that we perceive in our everyday life has mass to it. So it it interacts deeply with this field and it has weight to it. Think of that Higgs boson field as the snow. The skis ski atop across the top of it, then go faster. That's why light can go fast. That's why it's almost instantaneous reaction at a distance, as I said, because the ether is already there. It's only a chain reaction, if you will, but there is a speed to it, but it's not really a speed. It's more of an induction rate of the energy, right? So if you want to learn more about that, don't look into speed, look into a rate of induction. Try to understand what uh, an, an induction rate really is, and then you could understand that. But to, to essentially make it not interact with this field would to make it not have mass. You could still touch it, it would feel solid, everything, but it would not have the effects that something with mass would, such as gravity, okay, such as the magnetism aspects. So that's what these anti-gravity vehicles, all these things are. They're, they're an anti-field. There's a field, there's a way to completely make this probably through counter-rotating things like mercury, making a counter-rotating toroidal field. So where the phase conjugation kind of cancels it out. It's the um, same idea as sound cancellation or frequency in harmonics where you can take um, acoustic acoustic um, levitation. You make a noise at a certain frequency depending on the, the matter that you're trying to levitate and it will it'll actually levitate at very high or low frequencies depending on what it is. And that's how um, I believe that uh, a lot of the stone structures around the world were, uh, we were able to move these um, massive stones was through acoustic levitation. I don't believe too much about you know the ropes pulleys chain aspect when I understand the idea that they completely understand it, frequency and vibration that's very obvious in the the pyramids and other things and when they understand that then they can understand how mass comes to be so they could cancel out mass just through acoustics through vibration sound making something vibrate at a certain frequency would make it weightless and when you start to understand that, then you can start to realize that it's not interacting with the space-time continuum in the same aspect that we normally would. It would almost seem impossible to us. But it doesn't make it like anti-gravity, really. It just means it, there was a frequency going through it, canceling out the frequency coming at it, right? So if you could find, I guess, the frequency of the electromagnetic reaction that is pulling you towards the center of mass. You could, for specific um, materials, then you could easily, easily um, make them seem to have no effects or have gravity not have no hold on them. And it's a lot to think about, but it all ties back to frequency and vibration. And it all goes back to this phi scale. There's a booty back there. But uh, this point, this point where they cross, that that essentially is very key in the harmonics of our DNA. So to understand that, then you understand the frequency, the spacing of the harmonics, right? The spacing has everything to do with it at different hertz, right? They have a point where they all match up. They all meet at a certain point. Now your DNA does that. It's, it's like a braid within a braid within a braid within a braid, right? The string doesn't really have direct access. The, the braid of DNA doesn't have direct access to the RNA. So because it's a, it's a part of the string, that's part of the rope, that's a part of the braid. You get, you get what I'm saying? It doesn't have direct access. But there's a point where they all become coherent and they do have direct access. So 
that would be the computer, right? Your emotion de deciding, if you will, what program to use through your DNA, right? So your emotions definitely have an effect on your DNA and the electrical impulses through this spiritual awakening, right? And if you had all your senses, I, I think the best way to do it is to, um, it, you know, have an open-minded friend, maybe have a, a blindfold to test these things. Just test your senses, blindfold yourself. Um, and then just have them ask you questions like, how far away is the dog? What's the dog doing? Is it looking at you? You know, how do you, how can you tell? How do you sense? What do you feel? You know, everything about it. And once you start to understand that, then you understand you don't need your eyes to see. You understand that you can use all these other senses to get your interpretation of your reality, right? And then you understand how these people like that are blind or things like that can navigate and things like that, not just through making clicking noises with their tongue. I mean, that's one aspect where they, they see people do these clicking noises or whatever on YouTube or different things. And they can find out kind of like echolocation where these objects are. But there's, there's so many, so many things I could get into with this, but it all has to do with harmonics. It all has to do with the spacing in the DNA. The junk DNA is not junk, right? And it's all, all about harmonics. It has to be with these octave, the waves within a wave, within a wave, within a wave, meeting up, right? At a certain point, right? The toroidal field is right there. That's where this magnetic field is. And then you'd have another magnetic field and another magnetic field and another magnetic field coming in. But that suction point where, where it comes in is actually very critical to everything on how your body functions or how your cells replicate and to your, your life expectancy, a lot of things. So it's, it's when, when, when things become coherent, the, their energy, right? It's, it's almost amplified. So you wouldn't want to waste the energy you have. You wouldn't want to waste your time or your life here. So if you could understand how your emotions and your breathing, your heart rate, all these things can come together to make your life a lot better and to actually get to the next step of like, I guess you could say installment of DNA, like the idea that we have tadpoles for souls, right? And you're trying to grow it into a frog. You're trying to let your soul grow. You're trying to maybe retain and hold your memories after death. Not to become selfish, but to learn more, to pick up where you left off and take the next cycle and just go on, move forward, right? Not to regress. That's the natural progression of things. That's the way things work. Um, you can look up like evolution, things like that. It's the same aspect of why, why, why evolution doesn't work in some aspects because of birds. Like how did these birds develop wings, right? Did they just start jumping out of trees and dying when they hit the ground until what they did they didn't have the ability to pass on that gene that said hey you know i'm falling out of the tree and i need to grow wings or adapt more because they're not passing on that genetic material so your memories are definitely passed down through your genetics but they're more like dormant memories you know i have lots of crazy dreams all the time um really vivid especially more recently i've been having a dream every night where i could I could write you detail after detail after detail. Um, full color, noise, sound, scent, touch, uh, emotion. And they don't fade away when you wake up, you know, they're there. Um, I could describe buildings that I've gone through and or like map the layouts and everything. It's, it's a lot to take in, you know, there's a lot of theory involved with that, but it's, I guess, has to do with your perception of this reality. And to understand that 
all these things are like a computer program. We understand that there has to be a programmer. There has to be a source. There has to be, has to be a source, a purpose behind all this. And it's to come from nothing, you know, from dust you came to dust you shall remain, whatever, how, whatever. You know, you came from nothing, but you go back to nothing. That doesn't make sense. The idea that you come from this divine source, this all knowing, all seeing, everything where everything is just understood life completely to come through these stages where development of your soul to come back to being a part of that all again the process that is life that is the purpose of life to me is to go through this process to come back to the source getting closer and closer to you know bettering yourself bettering our race becoming more harmonious of nature and everything around us to essentially get back to where we came from, right? And just that, that in a sense, is a simulation of what it was to be God, right? To a, a simulation of understanding. And once they start looking out, and seeing all these numbers and with all these satellites and devices they have out there, you know, mapping the universe and things, they start to understand that, wow, we're getting back binary code, which we just started writing in like the 80s or 70s, like uh, <laughs> something like that. I think maybe the 70s. I can't remember, but they, when we came up with binary code and the computer language off on, they understand that this, this language is ever present throughout the universe. It's not... Um, something we discovered or created we we it's more like we did did discover it we realized the pattern um numbers are the language of nature and once you understand that there's patterns present throughout nature then you start to understand that through numbers and these patterns in nature can all become realized you can start predicting things but the real big the real big concern here is how our dna our heart rate our breathing everything has to do with this blissful state and how our emotions can control um plasma fields essentially like these energy fields in our body we can actually project a wave we can actually angle it would take a lot of control but nonetheless you would uh it's why the ancient Hebrew and things like that, they had certain letters and the Greeks had certain letters that actually helped people visualize um, the toroidal field that had to do with the key and the harmonics, which helped angle the way that the toroidal field was throwing the energy, right? Because it can suck, but it can also throw, um, kind of like a squirt gun, if you will the energy out. So if you can aim these toroidal fields, right, align everything up, right, then you can live at a much higher, clearer state of consciousness. So the idea of the pyramids, they, they projected, um, it was almost like a way to project and help people assist them in reaching higher states of consciousness, right? This unity consciousness, understanding that we're all one we're all part of the same thing we're all picking up on these different frequencies and things like that with our bodies but nonetheless the source is still the same the radio waves are all there it's just what what the individual is is that frequency right your memories your experiences and your perception based on that but once you start to see the big picture of why where it comes from things like that then words like god don't become so taboo to you because you just understand that there has to be a word for the source and a word that is universally accepted is God, you know, the source. Um, doesn't mean a bearded sky daddy, but it does mean if there's no beginning, then where do we start? Right? There has to be a beginning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop it here for the day.
not for the day, but for now, I got to go to uh, a baby's appointment and see what the sex of my baby is. So in the next vi video, you guys will know if I'm having a boy or a girl. But um, we're going to leave it right here. I'll kind of bookmark this thought. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know comments and stuff. I'm going to start making a lot more videos now. It's getting cold. Won't be doing things outside as much. So, um, yeah, I'll be here. And in my free time, I'll make some videos. And we'll see how where this journey takes us. You guys have a good day.